Stanford University. Okay, well, welcome to lecture number two of CS193P for fall of 2013, 2013 2014 academic year. And uh, today we're going to have some slides at the beginning, a little more talking, and then I'm going to have quite a big demo that's going to try and hopefully synthesize all the things I've been talking about on the slides for the first two lectures, um, which is that we're going to start building our card game. Okay, this card matching game is going to be our substrate for the first two weeks of learning some Objective-C, learning about Xcode, uh, learning about how iOS hooks up the controller and the view and the model um, to make a UI. So if you remember from last time we did this card uh, thing that we did the entire card, it was a very simple class, got a couple of properties, three properties there uh, and one method and that's pretty much it. And so today we're going to go on and do another class which is a deck. Okay, the deck of cards. And uh, remember that card and deck are generic. They're not specific to playing cards, right? A playing card like the Ace of Clubs or the King of Hearts, something that has all that in it, that's a playing card thing. These are general cards and decks. So this could be a deck of flashcards, a deck of foreign language words you're trying to learn or whatever. So we're trying to keep these deck and card classes somewhat generic. So here's deck. It should look familiar in terms of its basic structure, right? We're importing our super classes um, framework there and then obviously importing our own header file in our implementation. And the interface for deck is going to have these two kind of fundamental methods. One adds a card to the deck and one draws a random card uh, out of the deck. Okay? And uh, the add a card to the deck is a little bit new to you because you can see it has two arguments. Okay, this is the first method you've seen that has two arguments. We, so far you've only seen methods with no arguments or a method with one argument like mat, match. Match had one argument or the setters, they also have one argument. So uh, notice that there, when you have multiple arguments in Objective-C they're kind of interspersed with the names of the method. Okay, so the name of this method, this long method is add card colon at top colon. That's the name of this method. Okay? So the at top part is actually part of the name of this method. And the arguments like the card that you're going to add and at top which is a boolean whether to add it at the top of the deck or at the bottom of the deck. Okay? Uh, those arguments are interspersed and we'll see how you call such a method uh, in a moment here. And then draw a random card is like a you know similar to a getter in that it um, returns a value and it has no arguments, but this is not a getter because we didn't make this a property. And it's kind of important to understand, you could have made this a property like a read only property or something that reads it, but since draw a random card kind of does something, it, it has a kind of an algorithm to it, a mechanism, you usually wouldn't make that a property. That's kind of an abuse of a getter to do that. A getter is really just setting and getting a value. It might have side effects like setting it might update the UI or getting it might sure, make sure it's initialized first, those kind of things. Uh, you're not going to, something that does something like drawing a card uh, is not going to be a property. Now if you want to have like that at top argument be optional, okay, you, the only way to do that in Objective-C, um, obviously we need our header file there, the only way to do that in Objective-C is to declare a new method add card colon with no at top on it. So this is a totally different method, it's totally unrelated to the other method, except for that in its implementation of this other method, we're just going to call the other one. Okay? So an add card, we're going to say self add card, at top colon, whatever we want the default to be, which I'm going to say is no. Okay? So just understand that you know, in some languages, you could, like some uh, arguments can be optional or you can kind of overload things to have the same method, name, have different arguments. No. In Objective-C every method is completely distinct and has a distinct name and extra arguments are interspersed like that. Okay, so these would be two different methods. Does that make sense? All right, so um, let's talk about our implementation of our deck. So our deck is just going to contain a bunch of cards. We need some sort of internal data structure to store all our cards in. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, a mutable array. So you've already seen the class NS array, which is the foundation class array, which is an array of objects. Uh, those objects, by the way, in an array can be of any class. There's really no way to specify what kind of class uh, of object is in an array. Some languages allow you to do that. You can specify this is an array of strings. 
um, and it knows that. But in Objective-C, you can't do that. And we're going to talk about how we deal with that. It's a little bit of the Wild West of Objective-C, but there are ways to kind of check and see what the objects are, uh, if you want to be really safe about it. But in this case, we just have this mutable array. And immutable means that we can add objects to the array. Normally, an NS array is immutable. Okay, once it's created, whatever objects are in it, that's the objects that are in it forever. You can't take any out, and you can't put any in. So if we want an array where we can add stuff, we have to use this subclass of NS array called NS mutable array. Okay, you can see that it's a property. It's strong because we want this array to stay in the heap as long as we're pointing at it. And of course, we always put non-atomic there. Okay, so this is going to be an array of cards. Now, once we now that we have this, we could easily implement add card, for example, by just saying if at top, then insert object, the card, which is the, argu the argument to this method, the first argument, add index zero. So insert object add index is a method in NS mutable array, not in NS array, only in NS mutable array because it's too bad we'd be mutating it. Um, that inserts the object at that index in the array, and index zero is going to be the top we're going to define. And then otherwise, if we're not going to put it at the top, we're going to put it at the bottom, we're going to use a different NS mutable array method called add object, and that just adds something at the end of the array. So everyone cool with that? So I mostly just put this method in here just to show you that there's a couple of different methods on mutable array and you know how we can uh, use the arguments. There's no big thing here. It's just kind of to get more used to what's going on here. All right, so that's add card, very, very simple. And um, there's a problem, though. In this add cards, uh, if we just called add, if we created a deck and then called add card, it would not work. Okay, it would do nothing. Why would it do nothing? Because the property cards, okay, self.cards is how we're accessing our own property, uh, its getter looks like that by default. If we don't give a getter, that's what the getter looks like. It's just going to return this underbar cards instance variable. Well, that underbar cards instance variable is going to start out as zero because all instance variables in an Objective-C object start out zero, all of them, okay? So including pointers. So that pointer will be zero, which is we call nil, which means it doesn't point to anything, which means there is no array, <laughs> okay? We got a pointer to an array that doesn't point to anything right now. Okay, so that's a problem. So when we execute the code in add cards, like self.cards add object card, that's going to not crash, but not do anything either. Okay, because we to I told you that you can send messages to nil, send messages to pointers to objects that where it's not pointing to one at the time, uh, and it will not crash. Uh, if you send a message that returns a value, that message will not execute any code, but it will return zero. Okay, so a lot of zeros flying around here. Okay. So how are we going to fix this? How are we going to make it so that add card works? Well, we could put something at the beginning of add card that says, if self.cards is nil, then go allocate a, an array in the heap and point to it, and then we'll use it. Okay? But that would mean every single time we have used self.cards, we'd have to go around and check and make sure it's not nil, and that would be very annoying. Okay, that would be very error prone, bug prone, we forget to do it somewhere, all these things. So a great place to do that little if check is in the getter. Okay, that getter that we have right there for cards, that's the getter for our private property cards. Uh, instead of just returning the cards, let's put a line right in front that says, if the cards is nil, then let's go allocate one in the heap and assign it, assign it to the instance variable. Okay, so the way you allocate a memory, uh, allocate an array in the heap is you say use ns mutable array alloc init. So there's two message calls in nested inside of each other. The alloc allocates the memory in the heap and init initializes that memory so that it's a you know, sensible array. And we're going to see um, how we build our own initializer in a couple of slides here. Um, so this way, every single time you call self.cards, you can be sure that it's not nil. It's at least going to be an empty array. Everyone understand this code? It's important to understand this, yeah. Okay, so the question is, um, instead of having this initialization code be in this getter, why don't I put, make an initializer like an init for DEC and put this inside DEC? Okay, and that is another option. And you're going to, again, we're going to see an initializer for playing card deck. We're going to make an initializer. And we could do that, but uh, 
having the initialization of this thing be closer to the actual getting of the property is more, it, it makes your init less full of a bunch of junk like that. Uh, and it, this is called lazy instantiation, by the way, doing it this way. We are lazily waiting till the last second till we instantiate. Um, this pattern is something everyone in Objective-C is used to, and you should definitely use it rather than doing things in your init. In init, you want to you know, set things, set values that you know, can't easily be defaulted like this. Okay? But that's a very good question, and we'll see init in a couple slides. Okay? So this way we're guaranteed self.cards is never nil. Yeah. If, yeah, so the underscore is from last lecture. Remember that uh, when we create a property, Objective-C automatically does this thing, assign synthesize, cards equals underbar cards. So in other words, it assigns an instance variable called underbar, name of property, to be the storage space for that property. So that's why underbar cards are automatically created for us there, behind the scenes. That at sign synthesize doesn't pop up in our code, but it's there, behind the scenes. That's a very good question. Any other questions about this? Okay, so let's collapse down some of this stuff and look at draw a random card, okay? So draw a random card, all it wants to do is get a random card out of that self.cards, okay? So that code uh, is very simple as well. So we just get a random integer, that's what arc for random does. If you don't know, it's just a C library function, gets a random integer, and then that little percent after it means mod, Okay, integer modulo, and then self.cards.count is the number of cards in our self.cards. Okay, so we're just going to get a random index into self.cards, then assign a random card to be self.cards square brackets index. Okay, so this is that same square brackets to access an array uh, kind of syntax. And it's interesting, that self.cards square brackets index, actually that's a message send believe it or not. That's same as self.cards, object at index, index, okay? It's just some special syntax, some syntactic sugar to make it so you don't have to have a long object at index. It's actually ob object at subscripted index or something, real long method name. So it's just a beautiful little simple uh, syntax, but that is a message send um, to get that, the card at that index out of the array. And then we're also gonna remove that card out of the, uh, out of the array because this is draw random card. Okay, it's draw the card out of the deck. So it's not in the deck anymore, right? Now there's a problem with this code as well, which is what if the deck is empty? Okay, if the deck is empty, then that unsigned index is gonna be zero, right? Because it's gonna be arc for random mod zero, that's gonna be zero. And so you're gonna say random card equals self dot card sub zero. Well, that's going to crash your program. Because if self.cards is an empty array, then there's no object at index zero, and you're gonna get array index out of bounds, okay? So be careful of that. The index, you cannot get the index of, the, the, if an array doesn't have an object to that index, you can't get it. Um, so that's easy to fix, though. We're just gonna say, if self.cards count, in other words, if there are things in the array, then we'll do that. 